Hey guys, welcome back to Ours For All channel, Anastasia and Munchkin here. And today I have something different and special planned for you. So today I want to talk to you about some of my absolute favorite paintings of all time and it's Vincent van Gogh's Sunflowers. So as we all know, Vincent van Gogh, he's this massive painter. And there have been books written about him and massive research has been created on this artist. So I thought instead of creating another art history chapter on this artist, I would really focus on my favorite painting of all time, which is the yellow sunflowers. And I would dive into that painting from start to finish and share everything I got my hands on with you guys. And so. I've decided to create art quick bits. So this is a chapter number one on Vincent van Gogh's sunflowers. Yeah, I hope you guys like it. Oh. Vincent van Gogh's sunflowers are not only the world's most famous paintings of all time, they're also the world's most expensive paintings of all time. The last record dates back to 1987 where the yellow sunflowers were sold for over 95 million USD in today's current value. And yeah, so not too shabby. <laughs> uh, this painting right here that you see is created by me about 15 years ago. It's done on silk. I just fell in love with this painting when I was a little kid and I've created over 10 copies at least of these yellow sunflowers since then for my friends and family. So I've created silk paintings, silk scarves, some pastels. I absolutely adore this painting. Fun fact, I have actually never seen the original sunflower painting and maybe one day I will. That's a dream of mine, hopefully. I won't give up on that dream quite yet. Um, so when I started doing the research into these sunflowers, there's so many things that absolutely surprised me. I could not believe it. One of the biggest things that surprised me the most about these sunflowers is that Vincent van Gogh created not one copy, not two copies, not even four copies, but seven copies of the sunflowers in a vase, which is absolutely astounding. He enjoyed creating copies of the paintings he loved and the intent of these copies was for sale or for gifts for his friends and family. The second thing that shocked me the most about Vincent van Gogh is that his entire art career is only the last 10 years of his life and in these 10 years Vincent creates over 2,000 different paintings that the world and myself included just absolutely love. So. Yeah, let's dive into these sunflowers. I hope you guys enjoy it. Vincent is definitely one of the few artists on this planet who's so closely associated with one flower. Today, these sunflower paintings are over 130 years old. On year seven of Van Gogh's art career, he starts working on two sets of sunflower series. The first series contain four paintings of sunflower seeded buttons laying down. They were done in Paris in 1887. These sunflowers were his initial studies, so to speak. Vincent knew that his sunflower paintings were special, and as did other people. Paul Gauguin, who Vincent admired and looked up to, loved these studies, and Paul actually acquired two of the paintings in exchange for two of Gauguin's own paintings. Sunflowers became synonymous with Vincent, just as he hoped. And actually after Vincent died, his friends brought sunflowers with them to his funeral. The second series contains seven paintings of sunflowers in a vase. These are the paintings that are most known to the whole world. The first one in the series has been painted around August 1888 on a turquoise background and today it's in a private collection. It is made on a smaller size canvas than all others. And here you can see two different color oppositions of this one painting just simply because it depends how you take the photograph and how you edit the painting that's original. That's why we see just slightly different shades. 
The second one was also done around August 1888 and it has the initial composition of the three sunflowers that we just saw previously. Plus he added two more sunflowers laying down on the ground from his initial studies that were done in Paris. So this painting, it was sold in 1920 to a collector in Japan and unfortunately this painting was destroyed in a bombing around 1945 in Osaka. There was a photo of this painting that was found in the archives of a museum, so we have a record of this piece. And there are also records stating that Vincent envisioned these sunflowers in an orange frame. The third painting is painted on a lighter blue background, and this is probably one of the more well-known sunflower pieces of painting on a size 30 canvas. Today it's located in Munich. It was also painted in August 1888 and in 1905 it was sold to an art historian Hugo von Schudi. Schudi was given a new job as a director at the new Pinakothek art gallery in Munich. At that time it was in the Kingdom of Bavaria, aka Germany present day. And Hugo continued to manage this gallery until his death in 1911. So I bet this painting stayed in that gallery ever since. The fourth painting is done on a yellow background and yet again in August of 1888. Just as the blue one, this one is one of the most reproduced Van Gogh's pieces in the world. Just me alone you guys has painted it over 10 times and you saw that silk painting that I showed earlier of this quick bit. And yeah, the original piece uh, graces the walls of the National Gallery in London. It's on a permanent loan from the Tate Gallery. So this painting was sold in 1924 by the Leicester Galleries to the Tate Gallery in England. We know this is the original yellow piece because the technical research analysis provides us with the evidence to this point. Van Gogh made certain changes while painting this version, such as adding like the drooping flower after he's already painted the background. Amsterdam's museum researchers suggest that this is clearly visible if you shine a light through the canvas from the back. The light passes through the thinly painted layers more easily, making the thicker areas look darker. So we can see the additions and changes on this canvas more than any other copies that followed this painting, for which Vincent already had a roadmap, so to speak. Now, speaking of copies, the following three sunflower pieces are original copies, or known as repetitions. They aren't exact copies of their original paintings. Each one of them has their own flair, so to speak. Van Gogh created copies as potential future gifts for friends and family or future sales. So the fifth painting was done five months later in January of 1889. The reason why this one is considered to be a copy is due to a more definitive choices of where the flowers were placed by Vincent. Since I mentioned it's London, predecessor has some of the sunflowers added onto the painting later on, as seen on x-rays and visible to the eye by thicker and heavier in paint brush strokes, suggesting their addition onto the already painted background. Initially, this piece was sold to Emile Schaffenecker in 1894. There has been some concern of whether this piece is a true Van Gogh or whether Emile forged it. However, the true identity of this painting has been confirmed as a genuine Van Gogh. This is the most recent resold painting of the sunflowers. It was purchased for a current value of 95 mil USD in 1987 and today it's located on the 42nd floor of the Sampo Japan building in the Seiji Togo Memorial Sampo Japan Museum of Art. The sixth painting is yet another one of my all-time favorites simply because it's yellow. This repetition was done in January 1889 and is one sunflower painting that was never sold by Van Gogh's estate. It remained in the family and it stayed in the home country of our artist. 
Vincent's nephew made it his lifelong goal to make sure a museum in Vincent's honor was built and carried this piece. Today, these sunflowers are in Van Gogh Museum in Amsterdam. This particular painting carries a few secrets along with it. First, we know it's a repetition because the brush strokes suggest the artist knew exactly where all the flowers will go in the composition. And the x-rays also confirm this, as well as the x-rays show that Van Gogh has actually lengthened this painting to get more room up for the sunflowers on top of the painting. And he extended some of the long pieces of greenery over the wooden strip that he nailed in. Well, Amsterdam's research team actually has done these x-rays and they show that this extra strip is nailed in. You guys can check out their website and see how it was done. For copyright reasons, I don't think I can include that photo. Another cool fact, in 1961, a conservator reinforced the joint between the strip and the canvas using glue, nails, and bolts, which is also seen on the x-rays. Another neat fact, this painting has Van Gogh's fingerprints at the top of the painting. Amsterdam Museum has decided that even though this painting is stable, it still remains fragile and it will no longer travel to any other location from Amsterdam's museum. Previously, this piece has been on vacation, so to speak, only six times in the museum's 46 year old history. Finally, the seventh painting, which was also created in January 1889, is a repetition of the blue painting. Its original sale was never recorded and it does have a quite a complicated story how it was sold from owner to owner, but today it is in the Mr. and Mrs. Carol Tyson Jr. collection at the Philadelphia Museum of Art. So you might be wondering, why all the sunflowers? Well, to Van Gogh, the sunflower paintings had a special significance. To him, they communicated gratitude, and the yellow color symbolized hope and friendship. The painter, Paul Gauguin, was impressed by the initial Perry series of the buttons. Vincent was touched to hear this from someone whose work he admired so much, and it confirmed his feeling that he was on the right track with these sunflower paintings. Paul Gauguin called the paintings completely Vincent, and Vincent somewhat put a claim on the sunflowers as his own. He even wrote to his brother Theo, stating, sunflowers are mine. During Vincent's time in Paris, he noticed that lots of French artists were painting flower still lives, or nature morte in French, since they sold quite well. I'd even say that to this day, flower paintings do sell quite well indeed. So for this reason, Van Gogh began to experiment with flowers too. They let him experiment with color and painting techniques. In the summer of 1886, he painted virtually nothing other than flower still lives. Van Gogh grew tired of Paris and its business, so he decided to relocate to the south of France. And in that moment in time, the beginning of spring of 1888, not too many artists visited or held their residencies in the south of France. But that was another one of Van Gogh's dreams that he worked so hard on achieving is to introduce the artists who he met through his brother Theo in Paris. Side note, Theo was quite a successful art dealer. Mostly he worked with the Impressionists. So Vincent wanted to show these artists the beauty of the southern France. And he wanted to create an active, lively artist community in that part of the world. His plan was to achieve this goal with a house that he leased in the May of 1888 for 15 francs per month, which was a fair price for a home that was in the best conditions at the time, in a small town of Arles that he called the Yellow House, which he hoped would house numerous of his own paintings and eventually other artists paintings as well. He hoped that this house could serve as an artist residence for others in hopes to split the rent of this house as well. When Van Gogh was able to afford to buy two beds, he moved into this home in September. 
In the meantime, he rented a room in a cafe from May to September. From his letters to the family, we can tell that Vincent was extremely happy to move in and create there. And oh boy, did he create there nonstop. The next six months can be thought of as the most prolific times in his art career. This is the famous house in which Van Gogh made a painting of his bedroom that we all know so well, amongst other famous paintings. Here are just a few. Some suggest that this house could have been rebuilt after the bombing in 1944, but it unfortunately was completely demolished after. Vincent knew how much Paul Gauguin loved his sunflowers, so in hopes that his fellow artists could come and establish his own art residence at the Yellow House with Vincent, Vincent embarks on creating a second sunflower series in a vase with which he wanted to decorate the guest room where Gauguin would be staying during his visit. Gauguin absolutely loved these paintings when he finally arrived to the Yellow House in October of 88. Here, Paul even painted Vincent with the sunflowers. Paul even asked to create another copy for him on a yellow background as a gift. As we found out from Vincent's correspondence with Theo, Gauguin's request for this gift wasn't taken too happily by Vincent. Upon Gauguin's arrival in October, an artistic partnership and collaboration that Vincent was so looking forward to unfortunately did not turn out as he had hoped. To say the least, the two artists did not get along, nor did they inspire each other that much. Gauguin criticized Vincent quite heavily, and that did not help his mental health whatsoever. The final blow was Gauguin's departure in December. The only good thing that came out of this visit is that Vincent got the validation from another artist about the sunflowers he made in August. So this did spark his eagerness to create three more repetitions of these series in January after Gauguin's departure, after the two of them had such a devastating falling out. Now, what's with the one color tone palette? There is no denying that Vincent was an art genius. His initial flower creations had traditional colors, but slowly Vincent tests the boundaries and plays with more extreme color juxtapositions. You might wonder, how did he make this fully yellow painting work? In a traditional sense of color theory, it nearly shouldn't work, but magically it does, and it captivates so many. The technique is called ton sur ton, Van Gogh paints in a whole spectrum of yellows. He carves out different hues of a single color, which is beyond brilliant in my opinion. Not only that, but he plays with the painting's texture by varying his brush strokes in various directions, lines, and curves. The famous American painter James Abbott McNeil Whistler also used this technique quite frequently. Look at this painting of Montesquieu or the symphony in white number one, and the symphony in white number three. So Vincent wasn't the first one to do this. And I really wonder, how did he come to this result? Was it on his own, or was it an inspiration by someone else? Now, what's with painting all of these seven originals in one go in August of 1888? On August 27, Vincent wrote to his brother, the whole thing, will therefore be a symphony in blue and yellow. I work on it all mornings from sunrise because the flowers wilt quickly and it's a matter of doing the whole thing in one go. So safe to say, he was not only inspired by an arrival of his friend Gauguin and the decoration of the yellow house, he was pressed by time of the true essence of nature morte, which when translated from French means a, the still life or dead nature, but it has such a more deeper meaning of vanitas. Everything completes the circle of life. So Vincent is chasing time, trying to capture the beauty of the flower before it wilts. As I'm nearing the end of this art quick bit, I am in awe of the sunflower story. After discovering everything that I have just shared with you, no wonder sunflowers hold the hearts of so many of us. 
And guess what? Vince's dream of making the south of France the place to be for artists did come true. He really did open the eyes of many prominent artists at that time to the beauty of this place. So more and more of them start coming to the south of France from the 1890s. Unfortunately, Vincent did not see this happen. He passes in 1890. But artists like Renoir frequented this location and he even bought property not too far from Nice. Henri Matisse also set up his residency in Nice. Then Pablo Picasso, towards the end of his life, also bought his last property not too far from Cannes, where he continued working. There's only one painter I can think of who worked not too far from Vincent when Vincent was at the Yellow House. That's Paul Cezanne. However, he was not a well-known artist at that moment in time yet. Vincent himself had even further plans for these sunflowers. In fact, he wanted to showcase these sunflowers as a triptych. And he wanted to combine the two versions, the blue and yellow, along with the middle piece with the woman rocking the cradle. So you can see the mom holding the rope and she's rocking the cradle that you don't see in the painting with the baby along there. So this portrait he made as a, an homage to a loving, comforting mother figure. He wrote to his brother saying that the yellows would intensify the portrait itself and he wanted to show off this triptych at the exhibition Le Vin, uh, to which he was invited to and it was a very special exhibition for him. And Vincent thought of this triptych as a symbol of gratitude as well. The portrait of this woman is actually his friend's wife, Augustine Roland, and he actually made five copies of her portrait. He called the portrait La Berceuse, which uh, means a lullaby. And on that note, we'll finish up on these paintings. This Munchkin's due date is actually today, so uh, we'll see when he decides to show up. But yeah, thanks so much for watching, you guys. I hope you enjoyed this art quick bits. I am not sure what the next painting will be, but trust me, I have tons of favorite paintings of all time. So I'm excited to dive in whatever painting I choose next. And I'll see you guys soon. Bye. Oh, don't forget to smash like and subscribe to the channel. And yeah, cheers.